it's a small compact hot mess so <clears throat> this is where i do a lot of crafting and painting um you know picture painting i have an easel here and um, a lot of parts for crafts um you know stuff 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 that i use for doing crafts this coffee table was the one that i made a terrible mistake on um so i'm going to get this out of here um it's an, it was never completely finished because i screwed up the top um so i'll show you what i have instead hi my name is kat from owling dog i love creative arts and restoring old furniture and other items the time you spend watching this channel is appreciated. I hope you subscribe and like these videos, which helps circulate the content. Feel free to drop a comment. All of these are appreciated. Well, let's go see what's in the barn. So this is a cabinet that I got quite a while ago, and <clears throat> I had tucked it into my basement and never did anything with it. Um, I knew that it was going to be a refinish. I don't want to paint it because it is somewhat old. Now, I haven't taken a deep, deep look at it, but I'm going to, of course, because when I, you know, when I take it apart here and start washing it, I can more fully realize the dates on it. So at one time it was keyed. Um, each drawer has a lock opening for it, I'm pretty sure not sure if those are they look inexpensive to me it might be like something that was replaced but after i take them off again i'll know better um it has that old etching i mean when when did we see that i mean we saw that as late as you know even the 70s so and then so here um it does have the um oh geez i want to say cove or something like that cove tail dovetails <laughs> they're not dovetails but they're a different kind of thing they're machined so um you know it, it's going to be you know it's going to be it's possibly it's an antique but not a huge antique if anything um it looks like i i'm gonna have to do some bleaching here and i i might just remove that um number one it looks like it has some mildew on it which I could clean, but it's, it's broken in half um, and it may not be structurally sound. So again, once I start putting some, you know, cleaning to it, then I'll, I'll figure that out. It's a, what an old sort of an empire style. It's upside down here. So, so I want to clean underneath it before I start poking around and make sure there's no spiders or creepy crawlies or anything. So yeah, let's take a look at it. Although I really hate to do it, I'm working in my backyard. And this is why it's, this dresser was in my basement. I gotten it a long time ago from online and I never did anything with it it just stayed in my basement and recently I knew that I needed to do something different with my crafts area it's just I hate it it's such a mess and I hate living with things out I really like to have things put away and organized and so I said well I'm going to take this upstairs and I'll just work on it at home and there's certain things that you just don't want to do in the house. You know, one of it would be scraping. Also, I'm going to have to use some stripper on this table. And um, I don't want to do that inside. In case I have to sand it, I don't want to do that inside. So, you know, I cleaned it up really well. And here I am using the um, scraper tool on the top and I'll do as much as I can everywhere um, before I put my stripper down. That way I won't have to carry it down to my car, drive it up to the barn, work on it, put it back in the car and drive it back. So there are a couple of spaces that are broken and I'm going to use a little bit of wood putty, some of wood epoxy to fix this one. 
and uh, some wood putty here in different places where there's a few dings. Here's a little spot here too. Just a little bit of um, wood epoxy or putty. I'm not sure I have enough epoxy, so I'll probably use wood putty on some of it. And first I'm going to strip it. So I don't know if you can see them from here, but see the scratches. Now I would love to put, you know, a hot towel and an iron over that. I actually don't have an iron, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to use a little bit of wood filler on it, unfortunately, because um, I don't have any other way to do it from here. It looks like this is separated, but it's actually not. I don't know what they did, but they must have used an, an uneven piece of wood <laughs> because it's perfectly smooth on the inside. Um, this is a little bit warped, so um, I don't have clamps here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-nail it and secure it as well as I can and um, See how that goes. Difficult to do things out of my shop. Hmm. I think I will just a little bit of glue. I don't even have a level surface here to work on. So it's a little, a little tricky. So I'm batting a thousand. Um, I can't, I have a stapler, but I can't get that to work either. So I found some little nails and I'll try and use these. Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have Purico stripper. It's kind of a harsh stripper. Kind of harsh. You need more than simple gloves. These are like regular rubber cloth. But I don't plan on getting any on my hands, but you never know. Thank you. 
So here I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper, and then afterwards I'll use 120, and then I'll go over it with 220, and then do some hand sanding. After putting on the stripper and having to rinse it off, and it rained yesterday as well, I got a lot of wood fibers poking off, so it was quite a bit more work than it would have been otherwise. So first can of shellac did this and it doesn't seem to be drying so I don't know what's up with that. I don't always use a power sander with antique furniture. In fact, I try not to do this at all, but I was gentle with it and sanded down the top and the drawer fronts. The sides I scraped a bit to get off any loose finish. I know some folks are very nervous about the way some of us handle old furniture. I love refinishing antiques. You'll notice if you watch my videos that I often don't sand antiques or I only scrape and sand the top. Antique furniture often has a wonderful finish, and I use shellac to protect it, usually. Shellac ter serves two purposes. It prevents bleed-through, and we're all familiar with this. But it also seals in the original finish as well. It seals off the wood from what you're going to do to it. If you have a tightly grained wood, such as mahogany or walnut, and some fine-grained oak, you'll seal away the surface of the wood, preserving it for your finishes such as paint. One thing to remember, when you're working on oak, which is often wide-grained, you should use additional shellac until you've filled in the grain of the oak. When you remove a painted finish from an oak piece, you'll often see bits of paint still stuck in the grain after you sand. If a person uses several coats of shellac under their paint, this is less likely to happen. The next person who refinishes the piece can simply scrape off your paint without altering the wood surface at all. I'm comfortable fit refinishing this way. Another thing you'll notice is that I rarely use stains on antique furniture. The wood seems to have its own beauty and doesn't need stain. I also use clear and other waxes, which I love as a protective finish. And so I have to do some, some filling. Um, I didn't fill these, they were filled, uh, but they show. And um, I did fill this. So I'm going to repair it with some touch-up markers. Uh, yep. So let's see what colors I can get going. So here I'm using General Finishes Flat Out Flat Clear Coat and obviously applying with a sponge. And it's a damp sponge. I'm going to give it several coats and the little brush is to get in with all the carvings.
what I did was I went through a lot of my stencils and I just chose styles that match that floral carving on the front or so I thought I might have missed it but I'll leave that up to you to decide um, I will list the stencils that I used below in the text um, there are all different kinds so um, although most of them most of them were the um, stick on type which I really I really like those um, but not all of them the birds were um, a different kind but I will list it afterwards
Thank you for watching the video. This dresser was an old one that I got online. It's an East Lake style. Um, it does have the pin and cove joints and it has um, like a spoon carving. This is probably, probably something that's more native to Pennsylvania, I'm thinking. Um, I left it mostly natural. I did sand it down somewhat. I, I scraped it down first. Uh, I filled in a little bit of spots where there was some chips and big dents. A lot of the big dents I actually left as it's part of its personality. Um, and I gave it several coats of shellac and four coats of flat out flat clear acrylic um, protective coat. It's a general finishes one. Um, I did Howard's wax and I did some decorative wax on the carvings. Not too much. And um, I've mended the hardware. I was thinking that I was actually going to switch the hardware, but the more I tried to study about the dresser itself, the more I realized that this hardware actually came with the dresser. So even though it feels flimsy, it is really old and I, I guess it's iron. It was really rusted. I ended up um, spraying it with an anti-rust, uh, rust-oleum spray, and then I did a bronze finish on it. I don't have my waxes up here um, at the house, so I, I will do that later. I'll post some pictures on Instagram if you follow me there. Um, so the black wax just kind of enhances these carvings. And then I did some stencils to follow along the floral line. And I'll show you that in the photos afterwards. It's really cute. So this is going to take the place of my ugly coffee table that I had and I was doing crafts on. Um, drawers work really nice now, all waxed, all fixed. Um, I renailed them and I'll give you some really good um, photos of those pin and cove joints as well. So, yep, thank you again. I hope you have a good rest of the weekend and I wish you all good and beautiful things. Take care. Here's a look back at where we started.